Yet the sea can bring strange and wonderful gifts. Tom was about to make the discovery of a lifetime. Not just a completely new dinosaur, but one that holds a crucial key to how dinosaurs came to rule the planet for almost 200 million years. The Southern Ocean continues to pound away at the cliffs of Dinosaur Cove. Tom Rich and his team race to pry clues from the rocks before the sea can sweep them away. 5,000 specimens have now been found, more than 150 species of plants and animals. Fossils are the only physical evidence of prehistoric life on Earth. What was that life like, that Earth of 100 million years ago? Dinosaurs inhabited a warmer world. Even for the creatures of Dinosaur Cove living close to the South Pole, temperatures were mild by today's standards. No ice cap imprisoned them, but their forests were cold and damp. They lived in a climate that resembled modern-day Scotland. How did dinosaurs flourish in these conditions when no reptiles can survive in them today? Tom looked for answers in the bones. In 1987, the team uncovered fragments of a skeleton, a common plant eater called Hypsilophodontid. They quickly realized they had a breakthrough, a major discovery that was almost an accident. It was dark in the tunnels. It was wet. It was muddy. They found one part of the specimen and realized that there might be more of it. So then the crew frantically went through the rubbish heap and very after about an hour or two, found several more bits of it. And then they went through it again to be darn sure there wasn't more because they realized that, hey, wait a minute, we got something unusual here. We've got what looks like a partial skeleton, which we've never seen before. Embedded in the rock was the long, narrow skull of a new species. It was a small and agile animal, and Tom named it Lielinosaura after his own little daughter. But there was something unusual about its skull something astonishing. This dinosaur had enormous optic lobes. The optic lobe is the region of the brain where messages sent from the eye are translated into a visual image. With a large area of its brain dedicated to processing light, Lielinosaura was a dinosaur that could see in the dark. And darkness was a daunting fact of life in the polar regions. During four months of the year, the creatures of Dinosaur Cove would have foraged and hunted without help from the sun. With its adaptation to the long Antarctic night, the Elenosaura is challenging the common perception that dinosaurs only lived in lush tropical regions. And they flourished in an age when great changes were underway. Continents continued to move and climates began to cool. Sometime in the Cretaceous, distinct seasons emerged for the very first time. At long last, winter had come to the world. The rapid transition from summer to winter appears in the fossil record of mass leaf fall. And still the dinosaurs thrived. To forage through the polar winter, Lielinosaur would have needed a metabolism that could generate its own heat. It may even have been warm-blooded, keeping on the move to escape predators. Its world lit only by the pale, cold face of the passing moon. So far, only Lielinosaura displayed a special adaptation to prolonged darkness, and this gives rise to new questions. Did some dinosaurs migrate to escape the long winter night? Were others able to hibernate? 
These are further mysteries whose answers may lie buried in the time tunnels of Dinosaur Cove. Uh-huh. What do you think it is? I'd say maybe a, maybe a vertebra. Maybe it's a local one, but a small one. Back on the beach, Tom and his colleagues search for further revelations in the rocks, and there would be more to come. The next find would shatter the dinosaur timeline and launch entirely new theories on when and where dinosaurs first evolved. Inspired by the discoveries at Dinosaur Cove, Tom Rich's team fanned out along the coast, hoping to find other exposed fossil beds. Fragments of dinosaur bones had once been reported by some students digging at Inverloch, 200 miles to the east of Dinosaur Cove. It was a good place to begin their search. In 1991, the team got a lucky break when a severe storm hit the coast. The sand was cleared away from a flat rock outcrop, revealing the fragments of 30 fossil bones. It was the biggest find in Australia since Dinosaur Cove. Looks like an old... <laughs> As curator of the growing collection of bones at the Museum of Victoria, Tom Rich comes to check on the field work. Leslie Cool, one of the team to discover the site, is in charge of the dig. Every day, Sand and pools of water have to be cleared away before the work can begin. Here at Inverloch, the fossil-bearing rocks are spread out along the beach within the tidal zone. The crew has only six hours between the tides to work the site. Is it heavy? To everyone's amazement, they discovered the rocks here at Inverloch were laid down 120 million years ago. 10 million years before those at Dinosaur Cove. Here was the chance to look even further into the past. What I think we should do is, is maybe try and remove some of this uh, rock above it. Um, how do you think we should go about doing that? I'd say if we run a, a crack along the... Uh... The site has produced some total surprises. Dinosaurs are cropping up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some long-standing theories of dinosaur evolution have been turned upside down. One of the exciting uh, finds that we have from this area uh, is the bone from...